In this video I'm going to work out three um, or four examples where we are differentiating bases other than the base E. All right, that's usually the first one that you um, learn how to differentiate. You know, you differentiate E to the U and um, that works great, but then there are going to be cases where your bases are not E. You might have a base of two, a constant that's a base. All right, so we're going to take um, a look specifically at two formulas here. If I'm taking the derivative of a to the u, where a is going to be a constant and u is a function of x, then we can apply this formula, natural log of a times a to the u times u prime. And this will give you the derivative. All right, the derivative of natural log of u base a. Again, a is going to be a constant, and u is going to be some function of x. Then when I take the derivative, I can apply the formula 1 over natural log of a times u, and then all of that times u prime. Okay, and that u prime, obviously, then when you simplify, can be put up in the numerator and you do whatever there. Um, but we'll be doing about four examples implementing these two formulas. And this first one's going to be a relatively straightforward case. Let's say I've got y equals 2 raised to 3x. All pretty simple. My base here is a constant, and that exponent there is a function of x. And so then that means I can implement this first formula right here. So when I go to do that, I'll have a y prime equals, all right, literally all we have to do is follow this formula. My base a is a 2 and the u is the 3x. So I can do natural log of 2 and then times a raised to the u. So my a is 2 raised to the u, which is the exponent. So 3x there, and then times the derivative of u. So the derivative of u, and the u right there is 3x, so the derivative of 3x is uh, 3. Okay, the only thing that I might do then, um, since this is just plain constant out here, I might pull that out in front and put parentheses around all of that. So maybe like a y prime equals 3 natural log of 2, keeping all of that in parentheses, and then times that 2 raised to the 3x. All right, but really just a simple implementation there of that first formula. Okay, now for another example. All right, I've rewrote those formulas in that top right-hand corner so we've got them to look at. Okay, on this example right here, we've got a y equals an x to the fourth times 5 raised to the x. So I've got a product rule going on right there. So we're going to have to implement product rule as well as then, because my base 5 here is going to fit that formula right there. Okay, so implementing product rule here, I'm going to have a y prime equals the first, which is x to the fourth, times, and I'm going to go ahead and use that ddx notation on this one, ddx of the 5 to the x, plus the second term, 5 to the x, times the derivative of the first, which would be ddx of that x to the fourth. Okay, using that ddx notation just kind of lets you see where you're going to need to implement that um, derivative. So next line, taking the derivatives, I'm going to have an uh, y prime equals, this will be an x to the fourth. All right, now this, I've got a base that's a constant, and my exponent is a function of x, so that means I can implement this first formula right here. So times the natural log of the base, natural log of 5, times 5 to the x times the derivative of that uh, exponent, which is just going to be a 1, I'm not going to put that in, plus 5 raised to the x, and then the derivative of that x to the fourth there is just going to be a 4x to the third. All right, now at this point I would probably clean it up a little bit, taking out a grace common factor. They both have an x to the fifth, or a 5 to the x power, rather, and they can both have an x to the third. So I would probably take out that greatest common factor, leaving this with a y prime equals an x to the third times a 5 raised to the x. And then on the inside, this term, I would have an x and a natural log of 5 left over. And in this term, I would have a 4 left over. So implementing a product rule along with that formula and then going ahead and taking out that greatest common factor. 
All right, um, on this example, I think we're going to be looking at the second formula. We've got the log of cosine x, and I did go ahead and write the base 10 in there. It wouldn't have needed to be there, but if our function is y equals the log of cosine x, all right, I'm taking the log of a function of x, cosine x is a function of x, and my base is a constant. So I can implement this formula. So y prime is equal to 1 over the natural log of the constant, which would be natural log of 10, times u, and my u is cosine of x, and then times u prime, so d dx of that cosine of x. Okay, y prime equals, I'm going to go ahead and put this derivative in the top since it's time one there. So derivative of cosine x is going to be negative sine x all over natural log of 10 times cosine x. All right, now at that point, um, I would probably take a look at this common substitution here. I've got a sine over a cosine, and that's commonly known as tangent. Okay, so then I would switch that out for tangent and make this a y prime equals a negative tangent x all over natural log of 10. Okay, so again, pretty straightforward application of just following that formula. All right, and we will do one more, a little more complicated on this one, just because you're going to have to apply some log rules first. All right, let's suppose our original function is f of x equals the log of x squared plus 7 raised to the third with a base 2. Okay, so there's a lot going on in this equation. So the first thing you probably need to do is implement some of your log rules. So I'm going to put apply log rules first. You want to do that before you actually apply this formula, and it's just going to make it a lot easier. All right, so um, this 3 can be brought down in front. So when I say apply the log rules, that's what I'm talking about right there. So I would probably go f of x, not taking the derivative yet. I'm just rewriting that original equation. So f of x equals 3 log of an x squared plus 7 with a base of 2 right there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and implement this. All right, with that 3, that's just like a constant multiplier rule. It's just going to sit there in front, and we're not really going to have to do anything with it. So f prime of x, we'll leave that 3 there. All right, now I'm going to start implementing this. My x squared plus 7 is a function of x there for my u, and my base is a constant, so this is going to work. So I'm going to have 3 times 1 over the natural log of my base, which is 2, times my function of u, which is the x squared plus the 7, all right, and then times u prime, so let's go ahead and use that ddx notation, ddx of the x squared plus 7. All right, now when I take this derivative, it's going to be a 2x. I'm going to put it up on top and probably multiply by 3 there. So this derivative will be 2x times that 3 is going to give me a 6x on top. So f prime of x is going to be a 6x all over natural log of 2 times x squared plus 7. So again, um, pretty straightforward implementing these formulas. All right, you are going to have to have these formulas memorized in order to be able to do these type of derivatives if you would happen to run into equations that fit these forms. Definitely, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks.